Happy Friday, everybody. It is Penny and Kim, and we're coming to you with the five stars of Strengthening Families. We're continuing our conversation about communication and the social emotional competence of children. Penny's going to do our check in today. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us on this hopefully sunny Friday, wherever you are. So last week we talked about um, how do you assist your children in dealing with their big feelings. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, modeling, we talked a little bit about uh, validating, making space for the feelings, not rushing through to the feeling good part, but to sitting with them, and teaching them the language around emotion. Uh, that's huge in their um, emotional intelligence is, is learning the language of emotions. So at the end, we invited you to take an opportunity throughout the week when you were struggling a little bit with something to work that through in front of your children in an age appropriate way, uh, using the language and talking about your strategies um, and show, modeling that healthy regulation to your children when it wasn't involving them. So let's say you I don't know, got a paper cut, right? Oh, you know, the pain, the irritation, oh, that really hurts. Maybe I'll put it under some cold water or, or maybe you're disappointed because you were hoping you were going to get your package in the mail and it didn't arrive and those kinds of opportunities. You know, we, we, we cautioned you not to make it too big and not to make it in any way the child's responsibility to, you know, but just working through those things, showing them, talking the language. You know, I'm impatient and I'm frustrated because I really wanted that. And now I'm so disappointed it's not here. Now it's going to be a long weekend and I'm not. Man, you know, I need to, you know, whatever it is you do to let your feelings out in a healthy way. Shadow box. We talked about that. Or play on your piano or draw a picture or you know anything you happen to use but really using words that they can understand and showing them how you start here you take some time to go through and you end up here going okay you know I was really really annoyed but I feel better now and you know what I can wait for the package it'll get here eventually yep. right that's a beautiful way to just show them that process um and Old. they're watching you all the time yep taking some deep breaths going for a walk plug in whatever works for you um, yeah. and making it even child friendly in that their strategies your children could see themselves doing so you know maybe not a glass of wine maybe a walk or maybe not journaling even though you do it but maybe drawing a picture or just helping it helping it be in a language they can absorb and understand based on their age right okay so moving on to today today's a good one I'm going to ask Kim this question how do you talk so your children will listen and how do you listen so your children will talk mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that comes to mind in how do you talk so kids will listen is connecting with your child at their level before, because if you're, if you're asking them to listen to, a, to an instruction or to something um, that you're wanting them to do, so connecting at their level before you ask for them to do something. So if they're busy playing at the height of their play and they've had no warning, number one, that things are about to change and they need to come to the table or, or um, you need help with something, um, connecting and, and seeing where they're at um, is, is, is worth its weight in gold. And then also I think, um, is, is not trying to teach at every moment that we have. And I, I say that with caution because, you know, we want to use experiential learning and, and, and teaching in the moment and incidental teaching and all of those things. But when we're doing it all the time, it's no fun. And they can see us coming a mile away. 
and uh, <laughs> don't want to, this is like uh, Charlie Brown's teacher, you know, at this point when we talk, it's more, 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 they just shut us out because it's like, here she goes again, she's going to teach a lesson again, you know, um, so, um, and connecting at their level rather than it always being about learning a lesson. What do you think about that, Penny? What are your thoughts? Well, I love this topic because like you said, um, as far as cooperation goes and how we ask for requests and, you know, call it what you want, connect before you direct or um, just taking, and it doesn't take long, like 30 seconds to just join them a little bit in their world. So yeah. if they're involved in a program, so when do we ask for requests, right? Well, probably not when they're involved in something. Okay. Well, if you have to ask them when they're involved in something, join them a little bit. Oh, what are you watching? Oh, that's a great show. Oh, you love that show. Oh, what's that guy doing? You know, 30 seconds of being interested in what they're interested in. And then the request. Okay. Yeah, I can see you're really involved and supper's on the table and it's time to come and eat. You know, why don't you come to the table and tell us about this episode you've been watching? We'd love to hear about it. Right? So talking, so they'll listen. And then listening so they'll talk so the supper table you have an opportunity to uh -huh. to really get into that with them and then they learn well they can stop they learn you're interested and they learn that you know it's not so bad if I get to come to the table and I have everyone's attention while I talk about Paw Patrol or whatever it happens to be in the moment um yeah so those I really love the concept of joining them and letting them speak and like you said it's not always teachable so when they're talking to you about how they want to redo their bedroom you know it's not the time maybe to talk about fiscal responsibility or budgeting or which is not to be confused with saying yes to everything they ask for but the idea that when you listen to them and really let them explore that and they feel heard and often changing things in our lives is about a, a need and a want in ourselves it's not really about having a new space it's about feeling stuck it's about feeling bored it's about feeling unsatisfied with ourselves it's about so many things it's not really about what color the paint is on the walls in your bedroom so when you start to explore that and let them get that out, lots of times that's all they need. And then some, and even if they do really want blue walls, you know, it could still be a no, or it can be, well, you know, that's something we can consider down the road or, you know, we really can't give you blue walls, but is there something in your plan that we could do? Something small, and compromise and problem solving. It's just, it. I could talk for hours about this. I was just going to say the problems. I love the problem solving piece where, you know, rather than, than saying no uh, right off the bat, you know, we could say, I wonder, I wonder how much, you know, like you said, it, not even talking about the fiscal, but I wonder how much work that would be. I wonder, you know, and even if you know the answer, still ask the question, I wonder, because then it, it, it allows them to think, of all the things that have to be thought of in order to, because I think in their minds, they think, you know, boom, my, my walls are now blue. That's what has to happen. I, I wish for it and it happens. They don't understand all of the things that have to, right? So if we can start to help them to build that muscle of, I guess it's the problem solving muscle of, you know, here's, here's what I'd like and, and here's all the things that are in between. And if we do all that work for them, we really rob them of that opportunity to do that themselves. And the other thing I wanted to add on too, from what you were saying as well, is, is that when we were, you were asking the children, uh, when you ask something of them, when they're watching TV or doing some, playing a game. So right now we live in a world that everything is possible. We can pause the TV where we couldn't a long time ago, we can pause the game that they're, you know, all those kind of things. So um, one thing that we can do is we can model when they come to talk to us and we're sitting down to watch our program, is we pause it and say, just a minute, I'm going to pause this so I can pay attention. And we model that um, 
for anybody in the household, for my spouse, for, you know, if my husband comes in or, you know, or, or my kids come in to ask me something, I'm just a minute, I'm going to pause it and say that you're doing that so that I can listen to you. I think that's a great way to help teach them to, to do the same for us when, when we're speaking to them. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's great points. And now when I think about that, and you know, it's interesting because it is a teachable moment, but it isn't you um, lecturing them. So you're right. teaching them beautiful things. It's just not a lecture where you said, you know, and it totally happens, eyes roll back in their head and they're just like, yeah, whatever. Or, you know, they'll say, I'm not even going to ask you because I know what's going to happen. So it builds connection. Mm -hmm. Yes. It just, it does all of these beautiful things. So the idea being that they're an individual human with thoughts, ideas, personalities. And when we welcome them and listen to them, that just validates who they are. When they oh, come oh. to us with these ideas and we start to lecture in a teachable way, they feel like who they are is not who they should be or who you think they should be. So the word that's coming up for me, Penny, is feeling valued. And that, so when, yeah, go ahead. You know, you're okay as you are. Can we repaint your room blue? No. And you're not silly or stupid or whatever for having those ideas or financially irresponsible because you're seven. <laughs> of course, you're financially irresponsible. <laughs> Right. And, and we don't even have to say that to them. But when we say, well, no, we can't do that. And we just we just painted your room two years ago or a year ago. How can we possibly do that again? We don't have the money for that. Which is really true. And there's a way for them to still talk to you about their dreams. That's so, right. And and if they realize that the answer is no and they have their sad feelings or their sad tears, disappointment, then we can help them through that. And that is building resiliency as well. So it's kind of a win-win situation. <laughs> it is. And you'd be amazed as the parent, your win is you'd be amazed what you learn about your small yes. humans, your medium-sized humans, when you really listen to them. Yes. When we can turn off our grown-up brains, and when I say join them in their world, I mean really join them. What if you could have a loft bed with a gaming station on the top, with an elevator, right? Like it's, it just, it's beautiful because yeah, you know, that's not gonna happen, but Right? Like, why do they love playing fantasy games? Why do they love pay playing video games? Mm -hmm. You know, it's because they get to be who they are and nobody's telling them that that's not, yeah, I just. And their creativity is not being squashed. It's being, it's being encouraged and nurtured uh, to grow. So the win, uh, like you say, is, is not that we got our way and we told them no, it's that there's maturation happening in all sorts of ways when we are able to uh, do it that way. And I think sometimes the fear for parents is that if we listen it's, and get involved and be excited, they're going to think it's a yes. And then it's going to be harder when we say no. And ironically, mm -hmm. the opposite is true. Yes. When you allow them that expression. Yes the no is actually easier to handle. Yes. Or like you said, which is beautiful. Oh, well, I wonder what would be involved in painting your room blue? Oh, well, let's yeah. think about that. Okay, so what would we need? Oh, we'd need paint. How much paint? Well, how much does that cost? And I mean, it can be an ongoing thing. Yeah. And they might come to that conclusion on their own that, oh, yeah, it's going to be three weeks uh, that I won't have a room to sleep in. It's going to cost... $400 and um, yada, yada, yada. But it's again a process yeah. and feeling heard makes no much easier to accept. Yes, yes, it sure does. Good point. And the one the other thing I'd leave you with is think about how you like to be listened to. Yes. 
Imagine you come to your significant other, your boss, your best friend, and say, oh man, I'm just thinking about this really great idea. I want to take my kitchen and I want to, and the first thing they do is say, no, you can't do that. That's way too expensive. Are you crazy? Like, how does that feel to you? Yeah. Um, think about. You don't feel valued. Mm-hmm. You don't feel respected. You don't feel heard or understood. You may feel embarrassed. That's why. When you, that's. That's right. It brings up all kinds of emotions, shame, embarrassment, uh, blame. So that's why when we when we do it the other way, it's easy. They, it's easier for them to handle the no because they they don't have to deal with all that other stuff that's bubbling up. Mm-hmm. They feel valued. They feel heard. They feel respected. They feel understood. And then they now understand. Oh, the answer is probably going to be no, and I get it. And sometimes they even arrive at that. They might arrive at it themselves. Very often they do. Very often they do, especially as as uh, when that 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 um, um, executive function is developed, as if they're older, a little bit older teenagers, and you know, they very often they actually do come to that themselves. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing when you get to see that. Okay, so challenge for this week. What do you think, Kim? Let's invite people to have some awareness. Um, around their expectations. No, I'm sorry, not that. Um, To have an awareness about how you communicate with your children in regards to their wants and their Mm -hmm. desires. And maybe just notice and try. Try interacting with your child as if they were your best friend or another adult. Um, Try stepping into their world and really listening to them and just see what happens. okay well that's it for this week um we'll be back again next friday one o'clock for our next session on um communication and building those building blocks of social and emotional competence in children so thanks for joining us have a great weekend everyone see you guys